NASA last week announced it selected SpaceX to land humans on the moon as part of the agency's Artemis program. To develop Starship for the moon, NASA will pay no more than $2.9 billion to SpaceX over the next few years. The money that will be matched and possibly exceeded by the funds from SpaceX itself. Under the terms of the world, SpaceX will fly Starship to the lunar surface without a crew at least once before transporting astronauts. NASA says there is still a chance that the mission could happen in 2024, although the agency is currently conducting a review of the entire Artemis program. Investing in Starship will help NASA return to the moon. The Starship is a Mars ship. By choosing Starship for the moon, NASA is investing in the Starship program itself, providing SpaceX with a cash infusion for the same technology and system it needs to get to the Red Planet, a true moon-to-Mars strategy if that happens. Humans have not traveled beyond Earth orbit since Apollo program ended in 1972. NASA has officially been trying to change that since 2004 when President George W. Bush of US announced what became the agency's Back to the Moon Constellation program. But despite Starship's ability to launch humans directly from Earth to the Moon or to the Mars, that's not how NASA will initially use it. For the Artemis program, the Starship will blast off without a crew to the lunar orbit. NASA astronauts will launch onboard Orion and the SLS and then either directly dock with the Starship or transfer to it via the gateway. The crew will take Starship to the surface, stay for about a week and then launch back to the orbit, where they will be transferred back to the Orion for return to the Earth. NASA was expected to choose two of the three companies in the running to build the lander for the moon. As the agency often has multiple providers to ensure a backup and to keep the energy of the competition ongoing. However, they have chosen to go ahead with SpaceX alone. While NASA wanted to preserve their competitive environment at this stage of the HLS program, the agency said in a document there were budgetary concerns and Starship was both cheaper and more capable than the lander proposed by Blue Origin and Dynatex. The Dynatex brought to the table a history with NASA and the Department of Defense of US while the Blue Origins proposal featured its national team consisting of the stalwart contractors Lockheed Martin, Grapple Labs, and Northrop Grumman. In response, SpaceX updated the cost of their lander to fit within NASA's current budget. The $2.9 billion contract carries roughly 13% of the amount that NASA's lunar module would have cost for the agency's Apollo's program which would have cost about $23 billion in 2020," said Casey Dreher, a chief advocate and senior space policy advisor at the Planetary Society, estimated on Twitter. For its lunar lander design, SpaceX has pitched a variation on its Starship spacecraft. The SpaceX is already on its 15th Starship prototype and has been regularly testing the craft. Many of the prototypes have so far crashed and exploded, with SN10 and its 10th Starship prototype being the first to land, though it exploded shortly after the landing. This is not the end of either the national team or the Dynatic Lunar Lander concept. The $2.9 billion contract awarded by the NASA is for development activities, one uncrewed landing test and one crewed landing demonstration of the Starship. NASA plans to compete for the subsequent contract for ongoing lunar surface fury operation. Anyone can bid on that, so the other teams could continue to self-fund to mature their lunar landing design in the interim. So what do you think? Will there be a second player for the moon mission? Will SpaceX go without a NASA to the moon? Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is WC Daily.